Our story starts with a young girl who's fast asleep but lost in the dream world. She suddenly wakes up, realizing that she's just had a precognitive dream. Sometime in April, she's on a bus juggling between several thoughts. She notes that it's an important time when she should focus on her long-term training where she'd have a chance to get a ticket for the national team. This isn't the time for me to wear a cast, she says looking at her broken leg and blaming a certain Nam Sayo. Then she recalls how she sustained a fractured leg by catching her brother who jumped off a building. She notes that after saving her brother, her luck has died for about a year or more. Amid her thoughts, the bus stops and a student from her school enters. Seeing how tall the guy is, she wonders if he's really an athlete. She continuously stares at him while he greets her and takes a seat right in front of her. She takes note of all the details about this guy, down to his piercings, shoulder, and scent. According to her, she's smelling the faint smell of soap that's about to disappear along with the morning air. She finds it so funny that she's about to laugh because she feels like she's the only one who can smell the soap. She tries so hard to hold in her laughter by tapping on her thighs, drawing the guy's attention. He turns around and whispers, calling her a pervert, and this puts her in a state of confusion. She then realized that from the moment he got on the bus, she forgot all about the competitions. The young girl who we now know as Namjio arrives at school and meets other students doing their run, and some even make fun of her broken leg. Suddenly her friend Moon Jisung walks up to her, suggesting they go in together. While they are alone, he inquires if she's taking a break from training, and she affirms by saying that she should do nothing for a while. They discuss for a while, and she subconsciously notices his ears, and the image of the guy from the bus flashes before her, and this makes her question if she's really a pervert. Amid their conversation, a girl called Yeo Unsu walks by questioning why Namjio is there when she can't even run. Furthermore, she adds that Namjio went around saying that she'll be on the national team and the Olympics, but now she can't even compete in the preliminary match. Hearing all this, Moon Gisung warns her to be careful of what she says, but she yells at him and questions his position to tell her off. To her surprise, Namjio tells her off by stating that the coach showed her videos as her training references, yet she can't even follow them after watching them a hundred times. She should be the one feeling embarrassed, isn't that right? After Namjio is done dishing out these words, the girl walks away angrily. Surprised at what he just heard, Moon Jisung pinches her lips and says that she'll screw up big time with that mouth of hers. They joke around for a while, and then he leaves her to go wash up. A while later, as the register is being called in class, the teacher notices Namjio's absence and asks if she hasn't returned from the training room, but the girl from earlier raises her hand and spills what shouldn't have been said. Moon Gisung immediately whispers to her, asking if she has to tell everything and if it's because of what happened earlier. He wonders why they hate each other so much, but she responds by telling him that there's no need for him to stand up for Namjio because she's a genius. She explains that it's not because she hates her, but rather she hates seeing her act like a genius while being pitiful all alone. On the other hand, there's Namjio with her broken leg struggling to climb up the stairs. She's anxious because of the pain she feels and the difficulty in walking around with only one foot. Thinking to herself, she acknowledges that while she's limping, others like Yeounsu will go forward in a flash while sneering at her. It's just as Yeounsu said, she acts tough, but actually, she's in a bind. She finally gets to the top of the building and immediately, a voice says that she can't just come up there as she likes and as she turns, she realizes it's the same guy from the bus. Anxiety instantly takes over her but she tries to hide it by asking what he's talking about when he's also up there. Seeing that his initial plan has failed, the guy offers her a spot to sit, claiming that they could see her from the sports field if she stands. Seeing how considerate the guy turns out to be, she admits that she's been anxious for no reason. So she struggles to sit while the guy offers a helping hand once more, which she declines. She then asks if he's the one who greeted her on the bus and if he knows her, but he decides to joke around by playing dumb. Out of the blue, he calls out his name Cha Gyol, 
and says that her face told him that she was very curious about his name, but she screams, saying that she was not. Surprisingly, she inquires if his name is only a single character, which is quite unusual in Korea. As time goes by, Nam Jio realizes that the unpleasant anxiety that had been lingering on her for a long time went away easily as if it was never there. She was certainly serious up until now, but now she feels like going crazy because it keeps hurting her pride, but she'll brace herself again. As their conversation continues, he asks about her name, and she introduces herself as Nam Jio. All the while, she has thoughts of first love in mind. H2 ends. In another scene, she's with the coach who's questioning her about her fractured leg, but her current situation makes him so frustrated and lost for words. He advises her not to push herself too hard and to have a good rest until the doctors say she's fine. One could tell that these are words mixed with worry, but feelings like hopelessness and disappointment inevitably come along. She feels like she probably has become the abandoned card in the coach's plan, although it was inevitable. Amid their conversation, he reveals that he heard from her teacher that she skipped class, and then he asks if she's rebelling because she got hurt. On hearing the question, her mind races back to when she fell asleep with her new friend Cha Gyol, so she tells the coach that she just fell asleep somewhere. He understands that she's restless because she got hurt, but he advises her again to brace her mind and to only do exercises for the year and not worry as this isn't the end. After their meeting is over, she thinks to herself saying that she thought that she reached all the way here because of her choices, but looking at how nothing goes the way she wants it to, she wonders if she has no choice or if she's on a different but fixed path. On her way back with her friend Moon Gisung, she notices him intensely staring in another direction and questions him about it. He responds by saying that he thinks he saw someone and suggests she heads inside first. Who could it possibly be for him to be in such a rush? She asks herself. Meanwhile, Moon Gisung stands by the window observing the person with blonde hair who looks so much like Nam Jio's brother. He feels she'd be worried if he told her so. He came out alone, but as he stands there, he recalls the words of Yeo eun -su, telling him that there's no need for him to side with his friend Nam Jio, but since it's already a habit now, he decides to do things as he likes. So he follows her brother to where he's going with his friends, and on getting there, he notices that some of them even have cigarettes in their hand. He calls out Nam Seo, but a particular guy holds him firmly asking if he really wants to go and guess who it is. The guy from the bus with lots of piercings, Cha Gyol. I knew he was up to no good from his appearance, or maybe not. Cha Gyal asks Nam Seo if he and Moon Gisong know each other, and he affirms by saying he's his sister's friend. So Cha Gyal, still holding him, decides to walk with him and send him off to Moon Gisong, surprising the other guys. While he's walking with his hand on his shoulder, he continuously ignores Moon Gisong, who keeps on inquiring about where he's going with Nam Seo. As they continue walking, he tries to console Nam Seo, who's still crying because of his experience with the other guys, and after a moment, he heads back. Confused, Moon Gisung asks Nam Seo if something is going on, and if Cha Gyal bullied him, but he tries to explain that the guy isn't like that. He recalls all that transpired earlier. It turns out the other guys were bullies, and Cha Gyal saved him from getting bullied by them, although he didn't understand why he was helping him. Still not convinced, Moon Gisung probes further, asking him why he suddenly became so quiet, but he still insists that his savior isn't that kind of guy, so he need not worry. However, he can't help but worry, and he even shares that his sister is also worried about Hai. Average Age Dio's only concerns are if he'll tell his sister again, how he knew his location, and if his sister sent her friend to monitor him. Moon Gisung explains that he came there without his sister's knowledge, and he also saw him by chance and followed him. But to his surprise, Nam Seo tells him that he also lives quite frustratingly and then walks away. How disrespectful. In another scene, Nam Jio is in bed alone feeling so bored. She stares at her phone waiting for a reply from her friend when she suddenly hears the doorbell ring. She limps out of her room thinking it's her mom, only to discover that it's her brother who's returning so late. She questions his late return, 
but he says that it's none of her business, and even adds that she must have nothing to do since she keeps staying at home and meddling. She follows him to his room just as he's about to shut the door, asking why he's picking up a fight with her today, but he returns a question to her, asking if she isn't being like this because she heard something from Moon Gisung again. On the other hand, in the bustling streets of the city, an average-aged man walks up to Cha Gyol, advising him to stop smoking in front of an adult, but the young boy replies by telling him to let it slide as the substance he's smoking has no nicotine in it. Meanwhile, back at the house, Nam Jio is still trying to get some information out of her brother, who just returned home at a late hour. She even promises not to get mad at him after he comes out of his room. Hearing all he's said so far, she asks him why he keeps talking about her friend, Moon Gi Sung. Just as she's still scolding him, a call comes in from her friend, so she tells her brother that she's going to get the information he's hiding from her friend since he doesn't want to spill. It is then he opens the door and runs after her, trying to stop her from taking the call. But before he can catch up, she enters her room and shuts the door behind her. While still on the call, she pleads for his honesty and asks about what her brother did today. From his observation, he suspects that Nam Seo might have already been found out, so he just decides to quickly say that he brought him away from some bad kids, and also adds that he warned him as well. Before he can even warn her against saying too much to her brother, she hangs up and walks out of her room inquiring who the kids are and what he did to get dragged away by them. Do you go around antagonizing people like you do with me? She asks further, and he replies by saying that he has no money or backing to hang out with other kids, and so he thought that something might fall off if he sucked up those guys. He recalls the words that they said to him earlier, and tells his sister that the reason is that the kids at school ignore him. She continues to question him, but his only response is that she doesn't know anything until the end. After hearing this, Nam Jio quietly walks away to go prepare something for her brother to eat before heading out. She informs him about the meal she's prepared and drops a message for their mother before leaving the house. On her way to the convenience store, she keeps thinking about what her brother said about her not knowing anything until she suddenly comes across her new friend Cha Gyol. Shocked, she wonders why she always sees him at times like this when she doesn't want to think about anything but just run away. While she's out there conversing with him, her friend Moon Gisung is trying to reach her on the phone. Amid their conversation, Cha Gyol notices her phone ringing from her pocket and informs her about it, and when she takes the call, Moon Gisung expresses his worry about her because her brother told him that she left the house and hasn't come back. Following this, he asks if she got really mad at him or her brother, but she feels bad that he knows and she, the sister, doesn't know anything. All through the time she's on the call, she can't help but notice how much Cha Gyol keeps loitering. Despite all her efforts to remain focused to get the information she needs on the call, he keeps distracting her with certain gestures that she has to postpone the call. After she drops the call, she turns to him with a serious face and asks if he knows her brother, but he reminds her that this is the first time she's mentioned that she has a brother. Now recalling all that her friend told her on the phone, she asks him what exactly he's hiding from her. Instead of giving her a reply, he offers to take her home instead, but she declines and asks him if he'll tell her if they get close. With a smirk, he says, we'll see. Thinking to herself, she says that since the moment she met him for the first time, she's been determined to listen once again if it's his words. The next day, she's with Moon Gisung, who wants to know if she's spoken to her brother, but she responds by telling him that her brother locked his door and didn't even talk to her. Rather, he called Cha Gyol. Then she asks if he has seen this Cha Gyol in question being together with her brother or harassing him but he declines and says that he only saw him yesterday for the first time. Worried, she asks how he found out about him, and he replies that it's from asking. However, it looks like the guy in question didn't do something personally to her brother. He assures her not to worry as Cha Gyal doesn't even come to school often, but he curiously asks if she knows about the kid in question, 
and she responds saying she only knows him roughly, or rather, he's just a kid she doesn't know. She inwardly wishes he had no relation with her brother, although she likes him acting like a gangster. Also, she wishes he wasn't a gangster, and he came to school as well. She wishes she could like him proudly without having any second thoughts because he makes her think of nothing else. At school the next day, Namjio is seated on the floor grumbling as she angrily cleans all the sports equipment. Suddenly, Yeo Yunsu walks in laughing and mocking her. Despite Namjio's request for her to stop annoying her, she insists that she came there because she also has something to do. She stares at her revealing that she's bored, but Namjio responds saying that if she's bored, she can wipe the equipment in her place instead. If I do that, you will be too useless. Yo Yo Eunsu replies, and as if that's not enough, she steps on the already cleaned items and throws a ball at her. How much more cruelty can come from this girl? Now in the training room, Yo Eunsu puts in her best at training while the coach watches her, but despite all her efforts, he informs her that her feet are still heavy and suggests they take a short break. He urges her to do well now that Namjio is not around because when her legs heal up, it'll just take a while for her to catch up. So she should get a medal in her absence. With this being said, she promises to get the medal before the coach leaves her. She's still trying to deal with the frustration when her friend walks in, inquiring if she's okay while offering her a drink. Seeing how annoyed she is over the whole Namjio issue, her friend reminds her of what she said about doing something about the situation, and so she whispers asking if she should just lock her up somewhere like a warehouse. Shocked, her friend screams that it's a crime and tries to warn her against the repercussions if caught in the process, but she asserts that she won't be caught. Meanwhile, in the storehouse, Namjio, who had fallen asleep earlier, wakes up wondering when it got to nighttime. She notices a jacket on her body but while she stares at it, she hears Chagyol's voice asking if she's awake. He even suggests that they get along well for the rest of the day. Could this mean that they've been locked up together? Confused and somewhat embarrassed, she asks what he means by such a statement. And without even hearing his response, she heads toward the door trying to run away quickly, only to discover that the door is locked. She tries to reach for her phone, but recalls that she left it in the classroom, so she asks for his phone and instructs him to try calling someone from outside. Surprisingly, he replies that he can't do that because his phone has no battery left. How frustrating it must be for our female lead. With no means to exit the storehouse, she begins screaming for help, but he reminds her that everyone's probably watching the soccer match, so she should just give up because no one would hear her. In her musings, she wonders why nothing works out for her these days and why only bad things happen as if it's been waiting for her. Now it feels just as if someone is planning to destroy her. Amid her musings, Chagyal's voice pierces through the air, gently calling out her name and expressing concern over her standing in her condition. This comes as a huge shock to her, and so she inwardly asserts that he's a dangerous guy and if she sits next to him, it might get really dangerous. Though she feels ashamed of her attempt to run away, she notes how he makes her approach him with her own feet, and concludes that she can't win against him. Subsequently, he holds her hand asking if she doesn't want to sit, but all the while, she keeps on thinking about his subtle touch, before asking if he isn't holding her hand with any thoughts. In her head, she's already thinking that he'll just cunningly play games with her again, but to her surprise, he takes his hand off her and apologizes immediately. He also promises to sit far away from her if she feels uncomfortable. She can't even believe her eyes right now because she thought that he would come at her shamelessly, but here he is, getting embarrassed. Such a cutie. After a moment, he mentions that the situation seems a bit strange because her coach knows that she's in the storehouse, yet he locked the door without even checking it. He shares that he feels like someone deliberately locked the door, and just then, the realization of the culprit dawns on her. I barely crossed the mountain, just wait when the door opens, Yunsu, she says fuming with rage. 
Seeing him pick up his jacket, she asks if he put it over her, and he affirms, saying she looks cold but threw it as soon as she woke up. She apologizes and explains that she didn't do that on purpose, rather she was just out of her mind. Now, the thing is, she was just happy back then, and she was busy being excited because she liked being with him. And if only he knew what she was feeling back then, he would not have been gaggling tactlessly. On the other hand, there's Chagyal's friend, who thinks it's a good thing for him to be locked up with a girl alone. Back at the storehouse, Chagyal asks Nam Jio if her legs aren't cold since she's wearing a skirt. After a moment of argument, he takes off the jacket and starts showing her how she can use it in her favor, but she rejects it again. He teases her by asking if he should take off his pants too, but she screams in shock, causing him to laugh at her. She notices his demeanor and assumes that he must be cold too, so she invites him over to sit close to her, but he declines and later decides to trust her for once at least. This isn't the first time he is sitting next to her closely, but strangely, she's feeling nervous. She points out his looks and suggests that it's better if they stick together so she can cover him too, since it's his jacket after all. So he accepts the offer and moves closer, while Namjio can't stop thinking about the fact that their shoulders just touched slightly and her body became hot in an instant. She even thinks that it must be why everyone hugs each other when they're watching disaster movies. Lost in thoughts? She says that when Cha Gyol is with her in the warehouse, he might have seen it as a tragedy to get involved with her. The next morning, as he watches her sleep, he softly calls out her name, saying that she needs to wake up because people will start coming soon. As he wears his jacket, he tells her to say she doesn't know him when they go outside, and when she asks why, he replies by saying that he likes that better. Confused, she probes further, but he says nothing else and starts banging on the door calling for help. Luckily for them, a security guard just happens to be passing at that time. Still trying to understand what he means, she calls him, but he signals her to keep shut. And just then, the security guard opens the door and inquires how long he's been there. He only responds by informing him that there's one more person inside. And when the man confirms his statement, he asks Namjio if she's acquainted with the male student who just went outside. Remembering his instruction earlier, she denies knowing him. Now outside, Cha Gyal walks up the stairs possibly heading to his friend's house, and when he arrives at his destination, his friend comes out with a swollen face. He looks rather shocked to see him and insists on talking outside, which he agrees to. Before he knows what's happening, Chagyal grabs his face and says that he feels like punching it to fill in the other side that isn't swollen. When his friend requests to know the reason behind the sudden urge to punch him, he replies by asserting that he's the one who locked the storehouse door. He's even still insisting that Cha Gyal should be grateful because he let him be alone with a girl, and he responds by smirking and saying that this is why he wants to show his gratitude more. Still holding his face, he threatens him never to say a word about how and who he got hurt, no matter what happens. Later that day, a teacher walks up to Namjio expressing his concern over her experience of being locked in the warehouse. He explains that the coach said that she didn't come for a long time and the warehouse door was already locked, which is why they thought that no one was inside there. While she explains what happened to her that night, he pens down all her statements and mentions that the security guard said that a male student was also there with her. He even insinuates that something secretive must have happened and that if it were hard for her to talk about it, he'd call for a female teacher. However, she still insists that nothing of such happened and that she does not know who the male student is. Furthermore, the teacher tries to get more information out of her, but she remains firm in her claim that she doesn't know who the male student is. She recalls her mom calling her to yell for not calling her earlier. For some reason, she was scared that Nam Jio might have run away from home. Worried, the young girl asked her mother if she did report to the police, but she replied by saying that since her daughter does not belong to the streets and is not a stubborn kid, she did not report. However, she was about to report if she didn't contact her until morning. 
She warned her to make sure she calls beforehand next time if she's going to be late or not coming home. She assures the teacher that she told her parents that she fell asleep at school, so there's no problem. To aid the investigation process, he asks her if there's someone she's suspicious of among the people she last saw, but she affirms negatively even though she has Yo Unsu in mind. He instructs her to go to the nurse's office to warm up, since she must have been cold all night long. Just as the teacher steps out of the office, he sees Yeo Unsu and her other friend right in front of the door, but he only instructs them to go to class early just before leaving. Seeing how much Yeo Unsu is panicking, her friend pulls her and says that they need to talk somewhere else, because it wouldn't feel right if they bumped into Namjio. They move to a corner and the other girl starts questioning Yeo Unsu, inquiring if she really did lock the poor girl in the warehouse, but she responds by assuring her that she didn't do it. Yeo Eun-soo continuously tries to prove to her friend that she didn't lock up Nam Jio, but in the process, another female student overhears their conversation. After eavesdropping a little more, the girl walks away excited that she finally got an interesting news after a while, and wonders who she should tell first. Meanwhile, Nam Jio is in the nurse's office having some rest, but several thoughts keep running through her mind. It's been a long bad habit of her to expect her parents to worry about her. It usually ends with her one-sided heartbeat. She acknowledges that her parents have a lot of things to worry about other than about the kids, so she understands that they do not care about her. She was quite jealous of her brother before this incident, but she's glad that her mom really does worry about her. Her dad's health is the only concern of late, and she doesn't even know when he'll be able to work. Still in deep thought, she says that she must inform the teacher to not tell her mom about it in detail and just let it pass. After all, that night wasn't so bad. In a split second, she falls asleep and begins having a very weird dream about Chagyol and his friend. She suddenly wakes up, wondering why she keeps having such weird dreams. Last time, she didn't win a medal and this time she dreamt of Cha Gyo. However, one question lingers. Who is the person he's fighting with, and why does she partly recognize his face? She opens her eyes only to find her friend Moon Gisung sitting beside her. They walk out of the office while he inquires about what happened to her, but even after she explains, he still doubts that it's the complete story. Just as she's about to open the door, despite his offer to help, she stumbles, leaving him with no option but to catch her in midair. Well, you can say that our female lead is quite a stubborn one. Moon Gisung holds her in that position for a while until she reminds him to let go, after which she explains that she has a lot of things she's annoyed with, so he shouldn't dare add in more. When he asks about what is annoying her so much, she points out that her legs, Yo Insu, and even opening the door is getting on her nerves. Hearing the name Yo Eunsu, he quickly recalls an encounter with her and asks Namjio what she would do if Yo Eunsu really wanted to get close to her. She laughs it off, deeming it impossible because she's always hated her from the start. She adds that they have already become seniors and it doesn't even make sense if she wants to get close to her after all these times. On the other hand, there's Yo Eunsu seated on the stairs overhearing their conversation. She even carries the burden of the frustration to her friends in the Taekwondo training. In another scene, Cha Gyal's friends are in a playground waiting for him. They ask Woo Jin, the particular one he beat up before about his whereabouts, but he angrily replies by saying that it's none of his business. In the middle of their conversation, Nam Seo strides in, apologizing for the last encounter with them, but Woo Jin seems not to be having it at all. He even believes that Cha Gyol is coming behind him, but Nam Seo confirms that he isn't related to him and doesn't know him. As the bullies that they are, one of them tries to hit him after hearing him say this, but Wu Jin stops him, curious to hear the details. After discovering that they aren't related, he ponders why he did what he did on that day, and also questions the real identity of Nam Seo. Meanwhile, Nam Jio, who's grappling with the tension in her leg while walking, suddenly hears the voices of some people laughing. 
As she continues to make her way, she comes across a group of young guys, and to her surprise, her brother Nam Sayo is among them. Sweat rolls down his face as soon as he catches sight of his sister, and then she signals him to come to her. He pushes her out of the sight of the other guys and asks what she's doing there, but she spanks him and explains that she's on her way home to wash up because her bandage smells after she removes the cast. Now it's her turn to do the questioning. What are you doing here? It is class time right now, she asks curiously. They engage in a sibling feud for a while until Wu Jin makes his way there and immediately Nam Jio sees him. She recognizes him as the guy Cha Gyeol beat up in her dream. Nam Sayo introduces her as his sister, while inwardly noting that she's scared but Wu Jin stares at her, recalling the moment he locked the storehouse door. Nam Sayo asks if he can take his sister to the corner, and the request is approved. He's then told to grab a drink on his way back. As he walks with his sister, he notices her quiet demeanor and asks if she's scared, but she doesn't respond. He then assures her that if he's late returning home, he will be with the friends she saw earlier. He asks her to pass this message to their mom and to give him some money to buy the drink that Wu Jin requested. Just as he's about to put his hand in her pocket, she grabs him and says she's seen that guy before, but her brother thinks it's probably because they went to the same school. To his surprise, she mentions that she saw him in her dream, but she's sure that he's the one. Then she asks, why is he fighting with Cha Gyeol? Afterward, Nam Jio returns to the classroom, but her classmates gather around her inquiring about her well-being. She lets them know that she isn't sick, rather she's just thinking about some things. Their demeanor toward her felt quite different on this particular day, and she didn't understand why they all kept commenting on her kindness. They reveal that they heard about what happened to her, and while they are still at it, Yo Eunsu walks into the classroom with all eyes fixated on her. Some people even curse at her, while one girl complains about the smell of her food and suggests that she eat outside. Baffled, Yo Eunsu walks toward the window, opens it, and also asks why the girl is complaining about the smell of her food out of the blue when this isn't even the first time she's had chicken breasts in the restaurant. She points out that they always eat in the classroom too, so why are they being this way today? While she's still questioning their attitude, Moon Jisung walks in and calls her out for a while. The other students in the classroom are left wondering why she's going out with Moon Gisung when Nam Jio is there. This only baffles Nam Jio so much more that she has to ask if they're talking about her and why their attitude suddenly changed towards Yo Eunsu. To worsen the whole case, one girl asks her why she keeps covering up for Yo Eunsu when they've already heard everything about her act of locking her up in the warehouse. They share that everyone in the Taekwondo club knew that she was jealous of her, but they never thought she would go to the extent of locking her up. Hearing this, Nam Jio inwardly mentions that she never said it to Moon Gisung, so she wonders how they know about it. But then, she replies by telling them that it's not certain yet. Before they know what's going on, Yo Eunsu storms back into the classroom screaming her friend's name, Park Hyo Yun, and asking if she went around telling everyone about their little secret. She questions her audacity to spread such a false rumor, but her friend still insists that she didn't do anything, and another girl even calls her noisy. Seeing how much things have escalated, Yo Eunsu turns to Nam Jio asking if she's the one who spread such false rumors, since it wasn't her friend. Filled with so much hatred and anger, she slams her hand on the desk and asks if that isn't the truth. She says that she's not the one who spread the rumor, but she wonders if that's the truth. Besides, she always wanted to do something to her every time she had the chance to, so probably it must be the same this time too. Nam Jio goes on and on, talking about Yeo Eun Su's mean behavior, until things begin to get intense to the extent of Yeo Eun Su hitting her. Following this, Nam Jio has no choice but to retaliate by slapping her back. In the next scene, both girls are being scolded in the teacher's office for their uncouth behavior. Seeing the bruises on Yeo Eunsu's face, he mentions that athletes shouldn't swing their fists recklessly. He turns to Yeo Eunsu, particularly scolding her for trying to hit her classmate who's wearing a cast. 
He even adds that even though Namjio started the fight, she should have endured it because she's the captain of the Taekwondo club. After much hesitation, Namjio admits to being the one who started the fight. She claims that she hit her because she was too angry at that moment and begs the teacher to allow her to take part in competitions. Suddenly, Yeo Eunsu speaks up, also claiming to be the one who started the fight. All Namjio is trying to do here is help, but she's really clueless about it. So she keeps on implicating herself. Confused, the teacher asks both of them to head to the counseling room to write their statement. And after that, he'll be the one to decide whether they'll be disciplined or out of the sports club. Now at the counselor's office to write the statement, they still engage in another argument over the details to write. Sadly, this is so frustrating to Yo Unsu so much because she's actually innocent of what she's being accused of. After a moment of silence, Namjio asks her why she just did what she did and also says that if only she keeps her mouth shut, it'll end with just her getting disciplinary action, so she shouldn't interfere. Yeo Eunsu stands firm in her belief that nothing good will come out of it if she's the only one who gets out of the situation free. As it is now, the whole class doubts her, so she can't certainly say that it's not her. They begin to exchange words again until Yeo Eunsu finally gives up. All the while, Moon Jisung is standing outside the office, waiting for his friend to come out. He apologizes for not being able to pay attention and explains that he's been so busy lately because of the competition and some other things. What are you saying? She asks, bewildered. He responds by apologizing again for finding out late about what Yeo Eun Su did and what happened in the classroom earlier. She finds his words strange because it's not his business and he has absolutely nothing to be sorry about. She advises him to just care about his competition because she can't even compete even if she wants to. Good for him that he can just do sports without any headaches. She urges him to go back to training while she goes to submit the written statement. But just as she turns to leave, he pulls her back, saying that he has something to say. She inquires if it's something urgent, and when he replies, she suggests he tell her through a call later, as he also has to go for training. Still not satisfied with her response, he mentions that it'll be night by the time he finishes training, but this is kind of strange to her because he never used to think about the time. She insists that he calls her regardless of the time, after which she walks away. Left with no other option, he asserts that he'll call her later at home. Why is he acting so weird? Is he starting to like her or something? Now seated on the bus on her way home, Nam Jio goes through her chat with Moon Gishung, postponing their intended conversation. While she's still thinking about it, guess who unexpectedly gets on the bus and pokes her? Cha Gyol. Startled, she asks him how he knew she would be here at this hour, and he replies by saying that he waited at the bus stop starting around the time they saw each other the last time. And about four buses passed by. What if we had missed each other? She asks curiously. He responds, saying that it's because he wanted to see her. She tells him that it wouldn't be difficult if he showed up to school every day to justify his actions. He says that he stayed up all night again. To avert the topic, she wants to know if he remembers seeing her on the bus and his reason for embarrassing her by acting like he didn't. In response, he says that it's so that he can see her get all embarrassed. She playfully thumps his thigh upon hearing this, and he utters a statement that baffles her. Something bad will happen. A sudden quietness fills the air while she inwardly wonders what the bad thing is that will happen. Lost in her musings, she mentions that it's not a big deal to hold hands anymore. And yet, she's always the only one who freezes whenever it happens. If she shows any signs of letting go of his hand, she's afraid he'll get distant from her like he did in the storage room, and she can't let that happen. So, she turns to him and mentions that she got punished at school because she had a fight with her classmate and she has to clean the restroom with the person for the time being. He can't believe that she got punished for just arguing. But then she reveals that it got physical, with much urgency. He grabs her searching if she got hurt in the process. She assures him that she's fine, and in fact, she was the one who hit the girl first. She explains all that happened to him, 
and he commends the girl by saying that she sounds like a good friend who was probably being considerate because she didn't want her to be in pain. All the while, Namjio still thinks that something is fishy because Yo Unsu, who she fought with, is usually not one to hold back. Then she corrects his statement of being friends with her. Speaking of friends, she recalls the guy from her dream and asks him if he happens to have one with a big scar on his jaw. He responds by saying that the guy is not really a friend, but he knows who he is, and then he immediately asks if she knows him or if he said something to her. She declines saying that she saw him by chance and adds that she should probably be a fortune teller. When he inquires what she means by that, she explains that she once had a dream about him and the guy fighting, and he punched him till he started bleeding from a cut right next to his eyes. While Cha Gyal is still questioning if it was a precognitive dream, she further explains that she didn't even know the guy when she had the dream, and she was so shocked when she saw him in real life. He tries to wave it off by saying dreams mean nothing, but she interjects and mentions that there's more, so he should hear her out. Then she shares that she has a bad feeling about it, and she's nervous because this guy question seems to be getting involved with her brother too. Your brother? He asks, surprised, and she says that she saw them together a few days ago and was worried. Surprisingly, she asks if he knows her brother who is a first-year student with blonde hair, and he replies that he split them apart last time because it looked like he ran out of luck and got stuck with them, so he took him out of there. As the loving sister that she is, she requests that if such a thing happens again, he should help her brother, which he agrees to and looks away. Thinking to herself, she's glad that it was a misunderstanding, but she's bothered that he won't show her his face. She watches him as he rubs his eyes looking all sleepy, and then she recalls that he mentioned staying up really late. She continues to stare at him until they eventually make eye contact, which results in a kiss. Amid the kiss, his eyes light up widely, and he immediately begins to apologize, saying he did it in his sleep. He continues apologizing and wiping her face. Meanwhile, she can't believe that she just had her first kiss with a guy who claims he did it in his sleep. He pleads for her not to cry and also urges her to hit him if she wants to. But to his greatest surprise, she reveals that was her first kiss. Hearing this, he lifts his head and asks if she's mad at him, but deep down her mind, this is something she has been wanting to ask him. She'd been holding it in because she was afraid it would make her look inexperienced, but she recklessly blurted it all because she couldn't calm down after their lips touched. She inwardly acknowledges that she's been completely defeated as they share a kiss once more. The next day, the new lovebirds arrive at school together while the other students are jogging. Cha Gyal notes that it's his second time seeing people on the sports teams jogging in the morning because of how early he came to school that day, and all this effort is just so that he can see someone special. As someone new to dating, Namjio is just putting up a wall because she feels sorry, so she instructs him not to wait for her next time as she wakes up out of habit but doesn't know what time she'll be out. He readily agrees with this decision by stating that today is the last day he'd do that, leaving her slightly hurt as she didn't expect such a quick response. He hands her his phone and says that he was waiting for her to ask for his number, but she never did, so he suggests that henceforth she should ask him everything right away. During their moment together, Moon Gisung approaches her and asks what she's doing, but he instantly recognizes Cha Gyeol. Before responding to him, she quickly returns her now boyfriend's phone and dismisses him, leaving Moon Gisung curious as to whether they know each other. He tries to explain to her that Cha Gyal is the same guy he was telling her about, but she interrupts, saying that it was a misunderstanding and that her brother already vouched for Cha Gyal. Moon Gisung asks if she really believes them, and she's like, well, they both said it's not true, so what can I do but believe them? Plus, I'm tired of being treated like a stalker. She tells him that she has something to ask her brother, so she'll take care of the matter without him having to worry anymore. What's wrong with you these days? He asks, dazed. When she asks what he means, he says that she keeps telling him not to worry. She sees this as no big deal, 
but he insists that it is, and asks what she's going to do if she gets caught with a guy like Cha Gyal and loses her recognition as a gifted athlete. From the way he's sounding, she thinks that he's the one who's dealing with something and taking it out on her for no good reason. Plus, he even made her wait for him yesterday because he had something to tell her but ended up ignoring her text. After much hesitation, he explains that he wasn't in a situation to talk on the phone, and then he apologizes for being out of line. Despite Namjio insisting that he can still tell her what he intended to, he cuts in and says that he just acted like that because she hasn't been hanging out with him lately, so they should stop talking about it. She tries to explain that it's not that she's not spending time with him, rather, it's that he's too busy to hang out. Clenching her crutches, she notices that he has changed the subject, and she wonders why, though. While catching up, she draws him closer and whispers that she thinks something is going on between her and Chagyal. After sharing this news with him, she urges him to keep it a secret, because she's already walking on eggshells due to her injury, preventing her from training, so it would be bothersome if there were dating rumors about her. This comes as a shock to him because he recalls her saying she wasn't interested in things like that, but she replies by saying that life is unpredictable and that they are not really official yet. While she's still speaking to him, she unexpectedly gets a text from Cha Gyal, causing her to twitch. And then she laughs and mentions that it's interesting. Just as she's about to head inside, she turns and tells him that if it's hard for him to tell her right away, she won't push him so he should tell her when he's up for it because she can wait. Also, just in case he's gotten the wrong idea, she's not saying that he should stop worrying about her because she wants to draw a line between them. Truth be told, she didn't draw a line, she just didn't see the one that Moon Gisung had drawn. Then again, even if she had, there was nothing she could have done about it when she was head over heels for Cha Gyal. In the following scene, Nam Jio and Yo Unsu arrive at the school toilet for their punishment, and the whole place is an eyesore. Yo Unsu tells her to go sit somewhere, because it's obvious that she can't clean in her condition, and the teacher probably knew this was going to happen. Nam Jio insists that she can't possibly let her clean the whole place all by herself, and she even reveals that she brought a waterproof cover to protect her leg while she works. But Yo Unsu tells her off, saying that she has a conscience. As the cleaning begins, Nam Jio asks if she didn't really lock her up in the storage room, and she affirms negatively. She also shares that her friend Hyo Yun said it was her too, but Yo Yunsu responds that her friend doesn't believe her. Moreover, she said she wouldn't tell anyone either, but it turned out to be a lie, so for that reason, their friendship is over. After a moment of silence, Namjio asks why she hates her so much, and she takes a pause and mutters that she doesn't really hate her. She steps closer to her and explains that she acted like that because she envies her. Furthermore, she explains that she never won a match against her in middle school. At first, she was furious, then she got more and more envious. In the end, it turned into an unknown obsession. She would look for her news articles, but then she barely read them with her eyes open because of the jealousy that often boiled inside of her. It's not like that would mean she would see less of her photos, because she couldn't bring herself to close the tab. But the more she found out about her, the more it stirred up her inferiority complex, yet she couldn't ignore her. They had already gone against each other several times in the same weight category, and it was understandable, because she didn't really leave a deep impression and she was merely a taekwondo player who had to make an effort. Yo Unsu started to hate Namjio's attitude of suddenly pretending to keep her in check, and after talking with her, she realized that she was ruder and more talented than she thought. Why was someone like Namjio trying so hard when she was perfect in her eyes? Why would the coach and director give her so much advice when there's practically nothing to teach her? She had those thoughts for two years, and by the third year of high school, they had become enemies. She says that if only she hadn't stopped her on her way home on that fateful day, perhaps she wouldn't have gotten into that accident that cost her leg.
She wanted Namjio to take it out on her, as she was too prideful for no reason to apologize to her first. She needed an excuse to say sorry, but despite her wishes, she never blamed her. Yeonsu then reiterates that she wasn't the one who locked her up in the storage room, but she was craving her attention so much that she was glad that she got angry at her. She mentions that she has always wanted to be like Namjio. Later that day, Namjio and Cha Gyol are having a chit chat where she tells him about her conversation with Yeo Unsu. After learning that she wasn't the one who locked her up in the warehouse, she's now left wondering if it was really an accident. She tells him that she feels a bit sorry for making a big deal out of the whole situation. However, she acknowledges that Yeo Unsu has quite a temper too, and since the incident, she hasn't been close to their classmates even her best friend. Cha Gyol even suggests she use this opportunity to get close to her. Shifting the conversation, he inquires about the state of her leg, and she informs him that she has started physical therapy. It even gets as good as her not needing her crutches anymore. They stare at each other for a while in silence before she asks about his well-being. They chat for a while until she suddenly turns away, despite his plea for her to turn to him, she stands and moves away. Her reason? Well, she wants to cool off her red face from blushing so much. To her surprise, he walks up to her, gently lifts her to a seat, and calls her a worrywart. She admits to always being one, and adds that she's worried about him, her brother, and her parents. Tenderly brushing his hand against her face, he says that it'd be nice if she could let go of her worries, but she goes on listing more things to be worried about. Their conversation lasts for a while, and then, out of the blue, she mentions that she likes him. What a coincidence that is, because he also feels the same way. She suggests they kiss, but he reminds her that they already did that in the morning. However, she still insists on getting a kiss. He finally gives in and pecks her on both cheeks, but before he even realizes it, she yanks his ears and begins kissing him. During their kiss, he mentions that rather than just kiss her, he wants to get a bit closer to her. They make a perfect match, don't they? Cha Gyol is a bolt out of the blue and a catastrophe that shakes the end of her teens, and seeing how she's so sleeveless and willing means there's something wrong with her too. The force he pulls her with is so irresistibly huge like gravity that it makes all the problems around her really trivial. In the middle of this romantic moment, she has no idea that her phone is buzzing with calls from Moon Jisung. On the other hand, there's Moon Jisung who's dealing with a lot of crises and hoping that his dear friend would take his call and save him from it, not knowing that she's all loved up with her lover. The next day, Cha Gyol wakes up almost at noon and realizes that he has just missed school. He steps out of his room to greet his grandmother, only to find a man seated on the table with a meal served. Confused, he questions the man's presence there, and he replies by saying that he dropped by on his way home from work to get a taste of his grandmother's cooking. In the middle of their forced conversation, the man asks him if he still goes to school whenever he feels like, and he responds that he's been going every day lately. He explains that he's been having trouble sleeping lately, and then the man asks if it's because he's too busy dating. Seeing that he's been discovered, Cha Gyo smirks and tries to deny it, but the man asks again if he isn't dating the girl he saw him with the last time. He even goes as far as describing her long hair and broken leg just to remind him. She's someone's precious daughter. Don't do anything funny and take good care of her, the man advises him before asking about his friend Woo Jin. The man then asks him to look after Woo Jin because he's just immature and he's got a weak mentality too. So, as the one who came to his senses first, he should help him out, but Cha Gyol reminds the man that he told him not to hang out with Wu Jin, and also tells him that he can watch over him since he wants to be a detective. The man asks about his girlfriend again, but Cha Gyol warns him to stop acting like he's in a relationship, and also says that Nam Jio isn't someone he can be with. I hope this guy doesn't turn out to be bad for our female lead. The man dishes out some piece of advice and confiscates his electronic cigarette just before leaving. Meanwhile, back at the school, Namjio has just gone to answer the teacher at the teacher's office. A 
Apparently, her brother was bullied by Wu Jin and his friends, so the teacher invited her out of concern. So Nam Jio barges into the office screaming her brother's name and asking what he has been up to that's making the teacher worry about him. He tries to hide his face, but she yanks off his hoodie, revealing his scarred face. And then the teacher starts explaining that he has been coming to class hurt lately, and she can't help but be worried about him. With no clue as to who hurt Nam Sayo, the teacher directs the question to his sister, because she thinks that she might have an idea of who has been doing that to him. Just then, Nam Jio leans closer to her brother and asks if it is Wu Jin who did this to him. Enjoying this story so far? Comment Geo for part two. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, ciao.